We are going to add our search icon the same way we added the other icons. We will go to Ion Icons, uh, that is ionic.io slash Ion Icons. And then we will search for search. And then it will bring up all icons that look like a search icon. And then we can click on one and then copy the source code for that particular one. And then back in our HTML, we are going to be adding this icon on the navigation bar, but we are not going to add it in the same position as we did for the downward pointing arrows. This particular icon is going to be placed side by side with the nav menu. So it's going to be a sibling of the nav menu. So immediately after the opening nav element, we are going to create a div element and give it a class of search item. And inside this uh, search item, we're going to paste our search icon. Okay, if you refresh, uh, everything is going to be distorted, which is expected because we are just introducing an, a new element into our navigation bar and we will need to adjust the styles accordingly. So for now, let's deal with the HTML first. Now this button is going to be clickable or rather this icon is going to behave like a button and uh, for the law the, according to the laws of accessibility it is better to wrap it around a span element and give it a role of button so that way automated softwares that are passing or reading the website is going to treat it like a button and this is important for disabled uh, users who are attempting to use our website I'm also just going to give it a class of search icon and we will use this class later on in our JavaScript to add an event listener to this button so that when it clicks, we'll be able to open the search input. So now that we have added this, we need to adjust the styles for our nav element so that it can accommodate this new element together with its uh, existing design. Now, the way we want this to work is we want everything to remain horizontally at the center here. So in order to do this, we have a nav element that has two children. So we'll give it a display of flex. And by default, the flex direction is going to be row. So we'll have one, one child element to the left and the other one automatically to the right no longer top and bottom but now this one since it's a very small element it is not uh, uh, tall enough to be at the center so to centralize it we are going to use align items center so that everything within the nav element uh, will be placed horizontally or rather vertically at the center And now if we take another look, we'll find that everything has been centralized vertically. So now we can do a bit of cleanup. I usually don't advise using inline styles or inline CSS. So I'm going to cut this and then look for the styles for the nav element inside my style.css file. It's here. So I'm just going to paste those styles inside it so that the same changes uh, will remain on the nav element. All right, so this looks good. Now we have our icon. When we click on this icon, a search input is supposed to be revealed. So let us add the HTML for that search form. Okay, so on the same level as the span element we added, we are going to add a form, a post form. I will just add index.html as the destination of the data from the form. This is temporary. We are going to change it when we are implementing our website with PHP. And then our form is going to have uh, a few classes. Header search form and hide all of which we will define uh, later on. And then the form itself is simply just a single input element 
we'll give it a name of search term we'll give it a placeholder of search this website and then we'll give it some classes input control input control small because it's going to be a small text box and lastly search input and by the way some of these classes are going to be used not by css not in our css but in javascript okay so um, if you didn't get this, you can pause the video and copy the HTML for the form. And uh, this is how it looks. Okay, so initially we want the input field to be hidden. So what we need to do is we need to define a star for the height class. The height class simply does what it says. It hides an element from the page that cannot be seen. Now, height is a class that we are going to use very commonly. So I'm going to define it under the default section in our CSS. I'll just give it a display of none and that will be enough to hide the element. All right. So when the user clicks on this icon, we want the search input or the search box to appear while the icon itself disappears. And then when the user clicks away from the input, the, um, the icon should be restored back in place while the input itself uh, disappears. For example, here when we click on the icon, the input field or the input box appears and then the user can search. But if they click away or if they blur on that input field, uh, it should restore back to, the, to just the search icon. So let us do that on our project. Uh, this is where our JavaScript is going to come in. And what I will do is I'm going to create a script tag at the bottom here, just before the closing body tag. And the first uh, thing we're going to do is toggle search input. And in order to do this, the first thing we're going to do is select the search icon because that's the button that the user will have to click before they can see the input field. So we select that element by their class name. Uh, do remember to add the full stop uh, because it's a class we are selecting, a class name we are selecting. While we are here, we are going to select a couple of more elements. Uh, both of them are coming from this form area. So one of them is the form itself. So I'll copy that class and then I'll rename the variable accordingly. So handle search form. And lastly, the search input itself. So I'll copy the search input class and paste it here. And then instead of search icon, the variable will be search input. Okay, we have selected the variables. So what we want to do is we want to attach a an event listener on the search icon. So I'm going to do search icon dot add event listener. We'll go we will listen for the click event on that button. And when that button is clicked, we want this function to execute. So what do we want to happen when the user clicks on that search icon? The first thing we want to do is we want the icon itself to disappear. So we are going to add the hide class to it. Remember, we just defined a class in CSS called hide. And what it does is when added to an element, it will hide that element. So this line is going to hide our search icon. And what we are, go we are going to do a similar thing to the search form we will do toggle hide on the search form. Now what each of these lines does is the toggle simply means that if the class exists on the element then remove it. If it doesn't exist then add it. So that is what we are doing for the search icon and the search form. Initially the search icon is uh, showing which means it doesn't have a hide class. So if the user clicks on that icon 
it will now have a height class and so it will disappear. As for the search form, it will not be displaying in initially because it has a height class. So when the user clicks on the search icon, the height class will be removed and now you can see the search form. Let us try this out with a quick demo. When you click, the icon disappears and we can see the input field. Now what we want to do is, as soon as the user clicks, we should make it ready for them to type. So we should focus the input element as soon as they click. So what you're going to do is, you're going to pick, you're going to get this input element and execute the focus, the focus method on it. So let us refresh again. When we click on the input field, you see that immediately you can start typing because the cursor focuses on the input field. Okay, now another thing we want to do is we want to be able to want it to restore back to the to just the icon when the user clicks away from the input field or when the user blurs on the input field. So what we want to do is we are going to get the input field and attach a blur event on it. And when that event happens, what we want to do is we want to toggle all these. So basically, when the user blurs on the input field, then we are going to hide the form if the form was showing which means we'll basically toggle the height class and the same thing for the icon because when they blur, while we are hiding the uh, form itself, we want the icon to be displaying. If we refresh, now it is working. And if you look at these two functions, you're going to notice that they look very similar. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to define a new function here called toggle search bar and I will just copy this first one and paste it inside here and then now instead of writing this long function this long function I will just paste that particular function in here the same thing for this one now we can blur or rather we can focus on the search input anytime whether the input field is open or closed so it doesn't really make a difference which is why i'm leaving this line for both cases okay so let us do it one last time to be sure that it's working well okay and it is working well so that's it for this video i will catch you in the next one